Hey guys, Kev Meister here. I know it's been a while since my last video, about a year and a half, but um, I just want to say like, I'm I'm shocked this video blew up, 124k views is insane. But anyway, today I'm just going to talk a little bit about my speedrun. I'm going to give like a, kind of a guide, look through my thought process on the strategy, and um, you know, kind of just give some tips overall on speedrunning for Rome. A little backstory on why I picked Gaul, as you can see on speedrun.com. Everyone else basically was using Greeks. And I kind of just wanted to do something new. Uh, try a new strategy. And Gaul has some advantages over Greece as well. You start with seven territories, which is, the, I believe, the most in the game, but it might be tied with like Egypt or something. You start with seven, while Greek cities will start with five. And that too is a big advantage, because... Because to win the short campaign, speedrun this, you need to take 15 provinces. And starting with 7, as opposed to 5, is a big advantage. And our other condition for the short campaign is uh, destroying QI and SPQR. But you want to destroy Julia and SPQR. And they have 3 cities to begin with, which uh, proved to be their downfall, because it'll allow us to destroy them pretty quickly. Just get the right luck, get the right army placement, you can basically manipulate their armies and uh, get past them in the first few turns. Play on easy, easy difficulty just for to make everything as easy as possible. Because we're just trying to speedrun it. We're going to do all auto, auto battles only. Um, and we're going to have manage all settlements on, of course. Play as Gaul. I'll hit start right here. And uh, notice how it skips right to the loading screen. There's no cutscene. Usually, if you pick a faction and hit start, cutscene will come up. Um, but if you just spam escape, you do it fast enough or at the right time. You uh, you will be able to skip that cutscene about the barbarians hating hating Rome. You'll go right to the loading screen. This loading screen will usually take uh, four to five seconds, and uh, actually no, it'll take four to five on like a fast computer. But then slow computers can go like up to ten, and it's basically just determined by your computer strength. Um, it's not much you can do about it. So like just know that fast computers will they'll run this loading screen faster, and they'll also process the turns faster. Is something to keep in mind. In the game. This is your first turn. We're gonna build a diplomat here. We're gonna use this diplomat to bribe later. And as you can see, as you'll see, bribing is a big part of our strategy. Here in this town settlement up to the left, we are going to build a wall. Wooden palisade to be precise, but you're, you're gonna build that wall because your town doesn't start with a wall, and you might get attacked by Britannia. So if Britannia attacks when you don't have a wall, they'll instantly take the town and our runs over. So, it's an insurance policy because there's a chance they will come and a chance they won't. And if we don't have the wall and they come, our run's dead. And really, you just want to kind of maximize your chances because with speeding around a game like Rome, it's a lot of RNG and luck. So, you just want to just make it on as easy as possible on yourself. Like, it saves a few seconds if you don't build that wall, but just do it. Okay, moving on. Here in Narbo Martius, we're going to build. Uh, we're not going to build anything. We're going to move the army right below it to Massilia. And we're going to take that spire to start with and move it down towards central Italy. Yes. And near Lanium, we build a, build a warband and take all the army in the city and move it. We're going to move it. Um, to select all the army quickly, just hit Control A. To bring up the recruit menu also quickly, just uh, hit the city and click R. Then to close it, you can just hit R again. So I just recommend these tips for like if you want to go as fast as possible. Anyway, you're going to take that army. Oh, also one important detail. I play on a large size. I've noticed that the AI on different sizes, the auto battles will have different results. So I just for these consistent results, I played on large. We're going to move that army right here. Notice the spot. It's in the woods, so our army's crouching and hiding. That means that uh, the Julia won't be able to see us, and you're going to see where this comes into play. And then you're going to take this army by Batavium and merge it with the army we just built. Build a diplomat in Batavium because we need all that, all that bribery. And then we're going to take all the army inside Batavium and move it right behind. Notice how they're both hiding. It's really important that they're both hiding. You can see right now. So you can see that. This diplomat just bypassed our armies and went right here. We don't want it to talk to our armies because that opens up a, 
like a trade deal, and it'll slow it down. It'll slow it, our run down. And if the armies are both hiding, he'll just go right past. He won't see them. But if one of these armies is visible, like not crouching, and when the turn ends, uh, the diplomat will come talk to them. And it's just there's a wrench in the plans. We move the spy further down. We're gonna skip Iridium with it because we don't need the spy to take it. Able to move. First, the armies and attack Iridium. Build on one ram. I don't need one ram. Notice how there are two armies here. Uh, just just keep in mind that there are two armies. It's gonna come in the back of battle. We're gonna siege Massilia and we're gonna build one ram too. One ram is all you need. Megalonia, so we're gonna move him towards the center here. I want to get the maximum distance here because he needs to make it to this town next turn. So if you draw your line a little wrong, like you're too quick with it, uh, you'll miss it. Kill them. So we're gonna bribe the diplomat because he he didn't even get to talk to us last turn, but we're just gonna he came up right to our diplomat's footsteps, our doorstep, and uh, it's ours now. So we have two diplomats. Move we don't have to train one more, no more move. and we can just kind of move them to their respective towns. We're gonna be prepared to bribe in the future. Yes, we're doing that. All the diplomats. And then we're gonna get attacked out by Iridium this turn. So notice that this is uh, not a good odds. They, it's like about even. And uh, there are three outcomes, right? You can win, lose, or draw. Now, you think you'd want to win the battle, but actually if you win this battle, and it does happen some of the time, like uh, I want to say 25%, maybe 30%, 30%. But if you win that battle, you take the town. But then this army will retreat over here to the right and block your army the next turn from attacking this, which is what you have to destroy both of them. So that, that, that slows us down. And it kind of just adds another hoop you have to run through because you, you, there's a good chance we lose that battle too. But if we lose on the other hand, which also happens a fair amount of the time, I'd say like 25% a third of the time, uh, your army just gets pushed back and then your run's over because you didn't take the town. But if we get the draw right here, it's not as rare as you think. I'd say a, a third of the time, if not more, because the armies are pretty pretty close. But if we get the draw right here, we notice the casualties aren't too bad on either side. Um, we have uh, we have a lot of men remaining, 754. You want to aim for like around 700 in this battle. We're waiting, you can't on. control it, obviously. Yes, but you, you, you just have to hope. Um, so we got that devil map will always. Come talk to your town, you can't do anything about that. And then... We'll attack the town next turn, because notice yes. that... Interestingly... That second army, after that draw, retreated up here to the north and built a fort. For what reason? It remains a mystery, basically, but the AI is pretty stupid sometimes, so... It retreats with half its army, and the leaves this town to die, because we now far outnumber them. So, we'll continue here. Take the town easily. It's, I'd say this one's pretty often. I'd say three quarters of the time you win this battle if you get this far. If you get the draw in the next, in the last turn, then you will usually win this battle. But there's a chance you lose and then also your runs over. Just keep that in mind. Exterminate the populace because we only need these, town, these towns for a few turns. So it doesn't matter what state they're in really. The land is ours! We're gonna take Arminium. Or we're gonna attack Arminium with our little warband detachment we trained. Notice how we don't build a ram. I'm gonna move the army to also attack here. So they're both attacking, they're both sieging this town, and they're neither of them built a ram because Arminium's gonna attack out next turn. And there's no reason to build a ram when they just attack out and die. I wanna take Massilia right here. We already built a ram last turn, so we take it. That battle's pretty free, I'd say. About 90%. Then you're gonna bribe this town. Attack. I recommend doing it after uh, after taking that town because you need the money to uh, you need the money to even be able to bribe this town. The so you need to do it that order. But you have those two territories over there, and then we come over. Our minion has attacked out. You can see here we have a clean victory um, because they were just far out in the bird. And basically, we take the town without even attacking it or building ramps. So we save a little time. They, they just attack into us, um, and we exterminate the populace, of course. This Germanian diplomat will come over here. He's gonna have a slow animation sometimes, but you can't do anything about it, so don't worry. Same with the Spanish one, you can't stop him, but sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's slow. 
And sometimes this army won't come, and like that's a blessed run. But usually it will come and just slow you down. Yeah, it long takes a swing. So we're gonna next turn we've taken we've destroyed Julia, we've taken both their towns. All that leaves is FPQR. Move! We're gonna move this army down here. Notice the Senate army is right here. Usually they're just sitting outside the town doing nothing. Because um Maybe one reason they don't stay in the town is historically, the army wasn't, uh, and no standing army was allowed to enter Rome. Once you entered Rome, you became a, a private citizen, so like, no, there were technically no soldiers in Rome. That's just a little historical fun fact. I'm not even sure how accurate it is, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. But anyway, this, this, this army is not in Rome, which is important. They're sitting down here right south. If a rebel spawns, and it spawns fairly often, I'd say like, at least a third of runs end because a rebel spawns somewhere. Like, they can spawn, uh, they spawn right here, it blocks your path, and it leaves the SPQR army over here. If the, if the rebels spawn basically, like, anywhere along this peninsula, it can mess up the AI's movement, it'll draw this SPQR army out of place. Well, out of place for us. Rebels can also spawn, um, by your boats that you start with up here on the map. Um, and if they attack your boats, it's just a slow down. So, like, it's just chance. Rebels are spawning randomly and just wasting time. Yes, master. So we move, you see guys move the spy into the town. You actually shouldn't do this because as you can see this next turn, my, you can see, hear that little jingle, my spy just got kicked out of the town. So I kind of just wasted time moving him in when I could have just done it next turn and uh, not worried about it. Also notice the SBQR army is just completely missing. So if, if you get all the conditions right, all the right luck, SBQR army will be out of position. There will be, be some here or somewhere over here, but they're not going to be in our path. And that's really important because we cannot take on that army. That's a very strong army. So uh, you can see that our army is able to move straight through. No, no interruptions. A secure army, army is nowhere to be seen. You have to, everything up to this point has to be going right. There have to be no rebel spawns around. And then you have to at least do the movements as I did it. That's the way I got it consistently. And then you notice the gate is open. This is why you had to spy the entire time because um, you didn't know. When you put spies in cities, you have a, about a 30% chance to open the gate. It can be higher depending on how good your spy is in the city, but for this the purposes of this city, Rome, uh, basically it's always a 30% chance the gate is open, so like j just the chances you're getting all the other battles, plus this 30% 30, 30 chance, make it like really tough to get this far in a run. And then if the gate is open, we're able to attack. I'll go back right there so you can see that. You can see that odds are only even, and uh, basically you're going to lose this battle too, which is completely frustrating because the gate's barely open ever, and then you, you don't even, you're not even guaranteed to. Sometimes you win, and if you go right back to the beginning of my speedrun video, you can see that from the last run I just lost, and it's just chance basically. That's why you need that extra contingent you trained in Mediolanium in, in the beginning, the first turn, because you just need to give yourself the best chance in this battle. Like it's, it's a pain in the ass, but. We'll move on. We're assuming you win that battle, and then I'd say it's a 50% chance, on top of the 30% chance the gate's open. If the gate's not open, you're, you're screwed. Fear us. The land is Let's see how Rome, that's the hard part. All you can do, all you have to do now is just bribe these last few towns. You have enough money because you've been conquering everything. You just pay the rebels, bribe them, and that's victory. I mean, that's all it is to it, really. Um, let me know if you guys want like any more tips or guides. Uh, some other tips I have. Um, this is just an annoying thing about Rome, but when you click, or it doesn't register inputs when you click. It registers inputs when you lift your mouse. Stupid. But it's how it is, so if you're clicking really fast, you might notice that it's, it feels kind of off, because um, just know that it's because it processes the click when you lift the mouse. You lift the mouse button, and uh, yeah, that's basically my video about my speedrun. I'd really like to get more people into speedrunning Rome. Uh, I'd love to see some other factions explored, even if like they couldn't go like fastest pace. I'd love to see what people could do with them, and then let me know if you liked it. Peace.